cafe anyway. Mike's Daily Podcast. We meet again on this program at Cafe Anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont, the last place on earth. Mike's Daily Podcast. Did you realize that East uh, Spring? Just began. It happened. Oh gosh, was that Tuesday? I don't know, man. But this is FF episode 2405, and I hope you strive to make the most of being alive and that you don't drink and drive. Hey, I think that's the song today. Mike's Daily Podcast. I think I fulfilled my quotient of rhyming things. Today we're gonna maybe Mike's see outside Daily of Cafe Anyway. Podcast. Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, yeah. and John Deere the Engineer. Maybe we'll get lucky that way. But yes, lots going on today at my job. I was quite busy. Lots of stuff happening, things going on. So hopefully uh, I will be able to do this podcast and not get called and that kind of thing because I need to focus and tell you about when people give you advice my mom's second husband would give me unsolicited advice constantly oh he was trying to tell the young Mike about the world about things and about how to have a better life and what to do and what not to do etc Because he knew better. He was like the man who was uh, the most smartest person on the planet, apparently. And I would get these lectures that lasted forever. And my mom started to realize, wow, he is basically, it's the, it was so funny. Here's, can I just tell you, uh, I'm going to say one last sentence about this. And that is, I would get these long lectures about brevity and how to be brief that's the sentence. It makes no sense. It'd be a two hour long lecture about being brief, about brevity. Brevity is the soul of wit and all of that. that did Lincoln say that? And here's today's podcast picture. Get to what you want to say. Say it and then you're done and move on. And the Cafe Anyway podcast picture today is going to be fantastic and wonderful. And I have no idea what it is. But it's going to be groundbreaking. Yeah, so that's what I, I... So advice... Advice... There's a lot of unwanted, unsolicited advice that comes to us. And the other day I was getting some advice and, it, you know... I was kind of thinking, I don't really... I, don't, I mean, I, I try to listen... That's the problem. Is I love to hear what people say. You don't really know if the advice is bad until after you've heard it. And you go, well, that's a bunch of malarkey. Oh, look, there's the late, great Basil the Boxer. And that's what he thinks about advice, unsolicited advice. Or opinions. When I want your opinion, I'll ask for it. And then most of the time you don't ask for it. You just get it thrown right in your face, an opinion. So my thing today and the podcast picture will be from something two years ago. How about that? Find out what it is at mikesdailypodcast.com. What is, here are some questions you need to ask when you're getting advice. What's the advisor's perspective for this advice? Now, this was written by a guy named Alex Turnbull for the website GrooveHQ.com. He says, I remember in college, one of the most common questions that incoming freshmen asked older students was, which classes should I take? The problem was that some students want the classes that would challenge them And that they'd learn the most from while others wanted the classes that would be the easiest and would let them get the best grades for the least amount of effort. For obvious reasons, whichever perspective the student had made a huge impact on the advice that they gave. Not everyone you ask for advice is looking for the same outcome as you are. Some might be giving you advice that's best if you want your business to grow slowly and sustainably, or if you want to scale rapidly and sell the company or attract new investors. The best course of action is often very different in all of these scenarios. Consider not just the advice, but the perspective that motivates it. And how closely does the advisors, the person giving the advice, 
How much does their experience mirror your own? While it's helpful advice to get advice from people with experience that's different from yours, that's always uh, also a factor to consider when figuring out if the advice is relevant to you or not. We tend to give advice from the perspective of, well, here, here's what I would do. But if the advisor's experience is vastly different, then their advice will likely be colored by that. What are my own biases regarding the advice that you're getting? One unfortunate but inescapable truth of being human is that we're a lot more likely to take advice if it validates our existing beliefs than if it contradicts them. So what Alex Turnbull says, when I'm evaluating a decision and considering advice from a number of different sources, I know that I tend to subconsciously give more weight to the advice I already agree with. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's important to be aware of. It's hard work to try and strip your biases as you consider advice. But recognizing those biases is an important step to giving all good advice the consideration it deserves. Then you want to compare the advice to other advice you've gotten. So jo don't just rely on one person. Get a lot of people's advice. This uh, Alex Turnbull says, One of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten from a mentor who was telling me what he thought I should do about a particular hire I was considering. He told me his opinion. Then he said, And before you do anything, ask three more people. It's the non-medical uh, equivalent of getting a second opinion about your diagnosis. I saw a cartoon today of a doctor talking to a guy who's really obese, looked unhealthy. And the doctor said, yeah, I think what's wrong with you is your liver. And if you want a second opinion, I think it's your kidneys too. Don't know if that, I, I don't think I quoted that joke right. But anyway, you get the idea. And then also ask, can you live with this advice being wrong? At the end of the day, every decision you make is up to one person, and that's you. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcast Drove Alley Mont, the last place on earth. If you follow someone's advice and it hurts you, it's not their fault. It's yours because you executed on it. First, always take full responsibility of any course of action you choose and... Sometimes it's best to trust your gut. And that is one piece of advice I've heard over and over and over and over again. It's better to trust your gut. But check this out. Sometimes it's better to trust your gut and be wrong and learn from it than take someone's advice and be wrong and regret not trusting your gut. So that all from GrooveHQ.com, outside a cafe anyway. Somewhere in Podcastro Valley Mont, the last place on earth. Look who's here. Hello, Mike Matthews and Kelly Stewart, Gift Shop Supervisor. I have some advice for you and everybody here outside of cafe anyway, and that is buy one of my snow globes. Your snow globes, yes. And when I shake it and I go, Rosebud, you say, I don't know what that means, Mike Matthews. Okay, Citizen Kane, look who else is here. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floor Man. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Mike, that's great advice. The advice about getting advice. And I advise you to follow that advice and trust your gut. That's right. And I trust my gut needs to be a little smaller, so I'm going to try and eat healthy from here henceforth. And also uh, from, uh, you know what? Try and walk a little more. That's the advice I give myself. But you tell me your advice. You tell me what you think about this. Tell me what you think, what you really, really think. 336MM daily 3 plus 3 equals 6 MM as in Mike Matthews daily As in what this podcast has been For a couple of days Take us out A-frame Wait, 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 wait A-frame Don't forget that I'm going to be on the radio This Sunday from 9am to 4pm On a particular Bay Area radio station But you can hear it on the internet And there's a link to that At my website Mike'sDailyPodcast.com And next show It will be the wonderful hmm? Oh we didn't talk about music Oh But next show It's going to be the wonderful Benita the disgruntled fiddle player And the brewmaster uh, I've been thinking a lot About Church And you know what you should do Is listen to Lyle Lovett's song Called Church 
It's fantastic. Some of the guys that sing with the band Was Not Was sing on it and actually toured with him. And there is, uh, it's uh, from the album Joshua Judges Ruth, which also has a fantastic song on it called She's Already Gone that used to just pertain to every woman I dated. So there you go. May you date wonderful people that don't end up turning into a Lyle Lyle Lovett song. And at least once in your life, see a Lyle Lovett concert if you can. I saw Katie Lang open for Lyle Lovett once in Santa Barbara. You see... It wasn't when I was at UCSB. It was years later. But I was working in the Ventura County market in radio. And I got a pair of tickets to see Katie Lang open for Lyle Lovett. And while Katie was performing, the power went out because there was a fire. As there often is fires in that part of California. And, well, heck, all of California gets fires. And Katie Lang, the power went out, and she walked up to the front of the stage and sang, and people were like, shh, she's trying to sing, all right? It was a wonderful moment. Okay, now take us out, April. Mike's TV Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikestvpodcast.com. Email Mike now. At mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thanks for listening. So during the commercial break, sometimes I run, get coffee. Sometimes I run to a little boy's room sometime, or a little boy's bush, depending on if I'm out in nature or not. Um, I just talked to my producer, Mike, who's an amazing producer. He's, a, he's awesome. When I say uh, Donald Trump said something outrageous, he hits a button and boom, he's on it. But I said, what are you going to do this weekend? And he goes, I want to rock. And that stopped like, I, 30 seconds before I come on air. And it hits me like, wow, I should talk about D. Snyder. First and foremost, don't we all know who Twisted Sister is? Yeah. Don't we all know what he looks like? He's this guy that looks like a chick. Kind of. My dad hated him. We're going back to the early, late 80s, early 90s. My dad hated him. My dad was very, very conservative. They'll tell you a lot about me. These guys were shock rockers. Now, I'm not going to say my dad was a Perry Como kind of guy, but maybe.